Question. What is the meaning of Ezekiel's wheel, within a wheel, vision? Answer. There are only two Old Testament scriptures that directly reference this strange heavenly vision of a wheel, within a wheel, observed by the prophet Ezekiel. The appearance of the wheels and their workmanship was the color of beryl, and the four of them had the same likeness. Their appearance and their workmanship was like a wheel inside of a wheel. Ezekiel 1 verse 16 and 10 verse 9 to 10 says, And I looked, and behold, the four wheels were beside the cherubim. And their appearance was as one, the four of them. Of the many fascinating biblical descriptions of heavenly things in the prophet's visions, delineated in chapters 1 and 10, is by far the most stunning and complex. The description itself is hard enough for us to understand, since there is nothing similar to it in the Bible. We are also not told what to compare these descriptions in the prophet's visions to so that we may understand them. The difficulty of understanding his writings or any others is that the translation of the texts from Hebrew to English is sometimes not easy nor perfect. Since there is no certain and crystal clear understanding of this subject, Simply by reading the text, even after consulting several Bible commentaries, we can only come to an imperfect, general understanding. The Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 that there are many things that, as humans, we can only partly understand. So, the wheel Ezekiel saw was spiritually engineered. Next to each cherub, one wheel was placed next to another one. A few Bible commentaries state that they traversed each other, one inside another. Ezekiel 10 verses 16 to 17 tells us, like in a cross, they allowed the spirits to immediately go in any of four directions where they were told to go. And Ezekiel 1 verses 15 to 18 tells us, the two wheels for each cherub were unusual in shape. One wheel intersected another wheel at right angles, thus they could roll in four directions without being turned and could move with the cherubim. Concerning how each wheel was engineered, our limited understanding makes it quite difficult to comprehend how such things would be made in the spiritual realm. Those faces or sides of the four wheels moved, which answered to the direction in which the cherubim desired to move, while the transverse circles and each of the four composite wheels remained suspended from the ground so as not to impede the movements of the others. So, what we are left with is a description that would rival that of modern UFOs or UAPs that people see all over the world. The things that Ezekiel describes are not something that we are used to seeing in the Bible. It is so in-depth and detailed that it sounds like something that is very technical and nearly impossible to have been dreamed up by a person of that time. With the latest news from a whistleblower that the government has non-human spacecraft and beings, what are we left to believe? Have human beings been hurt or killed by a non-human intelligence? While I can't get into the specifics because that would reveal uh, certain U.S. classified in, uh, operations, uh, I was briefed by a few individuals on the program that there were um, malevolent events like that. Is the Bible wrong? Was Ezekiel visited by aliens? Have we all been misled? Quite to the contrary. The story from Ezekiel does nothing but affirm that these sorts of things do exist. Just because the wheel was sent by our God does not mean that those on the other side, Satan and his army, do not have the ability to do the same. Now, you may ask, if they are not aliens from another world or dimension, how could the government have the bodies of spiritual beings? Satan and the spirit world are just that, spiritual beings. Though this is true, they are in the spiritual realm. We are given many examples in the Bible of spiritual beings being in the flesh, such as in the book of Genesis. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, 
and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. They turned to him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Note that both of the angels here looked like men. They even ate the meal that was prepared for them, which shows they were manifested in physical form. Angels don't need to eat, but clearly they can. So, now this all gets really interesting. If you were the devil, and you wanted to discredit the word of our Lord, how would you do it? Well, we can see it all unfolding right in front of us. It has really started as, just as the Bible tells us, with the lifestyle of people today. The new Love is Love agenda tries to make the Bible irrelevant and outdated. Christians are the most hated and even listed on terrorist lists. Now, if he can show us that aliens are real, he will put his final nail in the coffin with this great delusion. The aliens will come. I truly believe this. These minions of Satan will come here, impersonating beings from another planet, and finally give the world's leaders a good reason to unite the world. The one world government, just like the Bible says, Ronald Reagan said years ago that this would be the one thing that could unify the world. Listen to this. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? So, Ronald Reagan knew what would unite the world. There are not many things a person could come up with that could. Can you imagine the difference in religion, culture, agenda, and the many other things that make one people hate another all being put aside and giving us one world under one leader? It is the perfect storm to fulfill prophecy. Now, I know, this is speculation. I have no proof of this happening. But, you can see all of the puzzle pieces being put in place for this. The scary part is this makes sense. Over the last few years, they have been sharing information that we would have never thought possible. UFOs have gone from being a fringe, tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theory to mainstream news. They have been grooming us with movies for years to have us prepared for this. This may not happen, but mark my words, if the aliens do come, they are not from another world. They are from the Prince of Darkness, and here to do his bidding. This hypothetical situation would also give them the perfect excuse to make religion against the law. They now have proof that religion is false and that we are all part of a galactic system of life that started itself everywhere. If you are a Christian, you will be looked at as a crazy person. You will be in the way of progress. Your thoughts and ideas will be harmful. They will take your children to keep you from poisoning their minds. You may even be executed to prevent you from spreading your dangerous lies. Can you think of a better way that perfectly fits what the Bible tells us is going to happen in the end? As I said before, this may be all wrong. I promise you though, if the aliens do come, remember what we talked about here. You will be made to feel foolish for believing in an archaic old book of fables and fairy tales. You will be persecuted for your belief. Do not fall for the deception. God tells us it will be hard and we will be hated. You must stand strong. You must always remember, no matter what happens, this scenario or another, the end result will be the same and Christians will suffer. The Antichrist and Beast system will come and do any and everything to make you feel foolish for believing in God and to make you bow at his feet. So never believe what the world says. Always trust what God says and remember John 3.16. If you are still with us, 
please join us in a prayer. Father, we come to you today thankful for all the blessings you give us, the ones we see, and those we do not. Give us the ability to discern what is in front of us, and to always know your word is the final truth, no matter the evidence they put in front of us. Help us to help others see through the web of lies all around. Father, protect us from the evil one as his power and deceptions grow. Through your son Jesus, we pray to you. Amen.